Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be going over five signs of a weak immune system. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And today we're gonna be talking about different skin problems that can reflect that your immune system is getting run down. Now, to be clear, there are a lot of conditions out there where people are immunocompromised. They have immunodeficiency. The findings that I'm gonna be talking about in this video aren't necessarily reflective of profound immunodeficiency, but more so kind of a clue. Your body is telling you, hey, slow down. You're getting run down. Maybe you're too stressed out. You haven't been taking good care of yourself. You haven't been sleeping well, and you're at risk for getting sick, like a cold or a flu or something. Number one is a really bad dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis. You're probably most familiar with this when you think about it in the scalp as a flakiness, but it's actually an oily skin condition that can affect other body sites as well. Anywhere on the body where there are hair follicles, you can develop seborrheic dermatitis. It can involve flaky red patches on the face, like around the nose, in the eyebrows, in the beard area. It also can involve the chest and the chest hairs. You can get these red patches and you're like, why am I getting these rashes? Seborrheic dermatitis. Always think of that as a possibility whenever you have a red scaly rash in a hair bearing area. You can also develop seborrheic dermatitis around the ear. And when it involves the scalp, you may find that your scalp is very itchy. A lot of people deal with seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. It's not necessarily an indication that they have immunodeficiency, but when they get run down, their immune system gets a little weak, this problem tends to flare and often can be much worse than it is at baseline. Now, if you deal with seborrheic dermatitis, whether it be dandruff or on your face, check out my videos on this condition. I go over tips, tricks, different skincare products to help get it under control. Number two is cold sore outbreaks. Some people deal with cold sores. There's no cure for them. They come and go, and when you get run down, a cold sore is likely to pop up if this is something that you deal with. Cold sores are due to an infection with a herpes virus, most often herpes simplex virus one. And what happens is you get an infection with this virus, and then it goes to sleep within the cells of your nervous system, and it stays asleep there because your immune system keeps it quiet. But when you get run down, that little virus can wake back up because you don't have as good a control thanks to your immune system being a little run down and you can get a cold sore. Cold sores often present as grouped blisters on the lips, around the mouth. And first they start out as just maybe a little red patch. You get these strange tingling sensations, kind of a sharpness. They can be painful, burn. They develop into blisters and then crust over. Getting run down is definitely a trigger, but there are other triggers for cold sore outbreaks, hormones, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, any kind of skin injury. When you have a cold sore outbreak, it is infectious. You can transmit the cold sore virus to someone else by kissing or sharing like cups, straws, lipsticks, toothbrushes. So be aware of that. Of course, if you deal with cold sores, you can shed virus and pass it on to someone else at any time, but it's much more likely when you are in the throes of an active breakout. If you deal with cold sores, definitely check out my video on cold sores. I go over you know, what to expect with them, how long they last, and what the treatments are for them. Number three is canker sores, otherwise known as minor aphthous ulcers. Now these happen in the mouth, on the soft tissues of the mouth, as well as the base of the gums. They're round, small, shallow ulcers that are yellowish to white, and the surrounding rim is red. Some people are just predisposed to these. Why? We're not entirely sure. Go away in a week or two, and they don't leave behind any scarring. They can be painful, but sometimes you don't even notice them. They often burn or sting though, if you eat like spicy food, anything that's acidic. Getting run down and having a weakened immune system is not the only trigger for minor aphthous ulcers, otherwise known as canker sores. They can also be triggered by hormones, um, irritating things in the mouth, injury to the mouth, nutrient deficiencies, which just kind of goes part hand in hand with getting run down. Minor aphthous ulcers, they can be a clue to you that you're getting a little run down, but there's another type of aphthous ulcers called major aphthous ulcers, and they differ. They're much larger, and they have kind of irregular borders. 
They can be incredibly painful and those can actually scar and they last a lot longer, greater than six weeks. So if you deal with these and they are really sticking around, they're incredibly painful and large, definitely see your healthcare provider because that definitely could be a sign of a more serious underlying medical condition. But otherwise healthy people often deal with minor aphthous ulcers, the small ones that last a few weeks and then go away with no scarring. And getting run down is a trigger for minor aphthous ulcers to pop up. You may be wondering, well, how do I know if I'm dealing with an aphthous ulcer or a herpes cold sore then? Aphthous ulcers, they never involve the lips and they are solitary. You can have multiple of them, but they're solitary, meaning they're not grouped together. Herpes cold sores, you get a lot of little blisters that are grouped together. Cold sores are due to the herpes simplex virus. Canker sores are not caused by a virus. They're just something that people have a tendency to develop. Number four is shingles. Comment below, did you have chicken pox as a child or adult? Anyways, the virus that causes chicken pox goes to sleep in your body and your immune system keeps it asleep. But when you get really run down, I mean, you gotta get pretty run down actually, as an adult, it can wake back up again. And when it does, it causes the rash known as shingles. Same virus, different rash. Shingles happens um, in a section on one half of your body. It can involve a section of like your chest, lower torso, it can involve your scalp and upper face or segments of your face. And it starts out as like these strange little sharp tingling sensations and then you develop a grouping of blisters in this what's referred to as a dermatomal distribution because it's waking back up along a nerve basically. The way your nerves are distributed in your skin, it's called dermatomes, basically these sections of your body. It will not cross the midline, meaning if you draw a line down the middle, you shouldn't have the rash going over to the other side. It resolves in a few weeks. Some people can go on to develop persistent pain. It's called post-herpetic neuralgia. It's more common in older adults or people with an underlying immunodeficiency. It also can impact your vision if it involves your face and your eyes. Now when it's caught early, an antiviral medicine can be given that will shorten the duration of symptoms and reduce the risk that you go on to develop this post-herpetic neuralgia. But in many cases, people don't get any kind of treatment and you know they just ride it out and it goes away. There is a shingles vaccine now that older adults are eligible for and it certainly can reduce the risk that you develop shingles. And I highly encourage you to talk to your doctor about that. Um, when you get older, if you develop shingles, you're more likely to have complications from it, including post-herpetic neuralgia, which leads to chronic pain. If you do develop shingles, it's also important to know that you are contagious. You can spread the chickenpox virus to someone else who has never been infected. You can spread it you know, to young children who have never been infected or have, are unvaccinated. And women who are pregnant, you can spread it to them and it can severely impact the unborn child. In some cases, when you get shingles, you may have a headache. Commonly, people have swollen lymph nodes affecting the side of the body where the rash presents. The virus that causes chickenpox and then later shingles is called varicella zoster virus, VZV. And it is a herpes virus and it is for life. When you have a herpes virus, it goes to sleep in the cells of your body, certain cells of your body, and it's there forever. A lot of people don't realize that chickenpox is a herpes virus, and you have it for your life if you're, you've been infected with it. If you had chickenpox as a child, you carry that virus with you for life, and when you get run down, there's a chance that it wakes back up again. Same thing with the cold sores. That is a virus that you get infected with, and you know, it goes to sleep in the cells of your body and then wakes back up and produces a cold sore. Same principle here with shingles. Number five, last but not least, is poor healing. Uh, whether that be cuts, scrapes, maybe you get a little burn from like the stove, slow healing in the setting of a weakened immune system. Your immune system is key for healing uh, to come in and, and clear out the dead tissue, bring in the new healthy 
cells, all that requires the orchestration of your immune system. And when it's weak and kind of slow, you're gonna have delayed healing. If you have a weakened immune system and you have to have a surgery, that certainly can delay healing and lead to a less ideal outcome, put you more at risk for complications. Nowadays, people are a lot more inclined to pursue certain cosmetic procedures. And while we have plenty of minimally invasive cosmetic procedures, enhancements, there are, you know, cos there is cosmetic surgery that a lot of people nowadays are more interested in than ever. If you want the best results from that, do not let yourself get run down. It's gonna get in the way of good healing. If you're gonna make an investment like that, you want the best possible results. So taking care of yourself is key. All right, you guys, so those are five clues that your immune system is not teed up optimally. But don't take this as, oh my God, I have dandruff, I must have a weak immune system. These are not specific to your immune system. Some people just have these issues and they come and go. They can be triggered by other things, as I mentioned, hormones, UV. You know yourself, you know, I mean, be honest with yourself. Are you taking good care of yourself? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating well? I think you know, I think you know if you're not. And if you're developing these kinds of skin problems, it's a clue that you need to slow down and prioritize yourself. This is a problem you guys now um, with our modern life and this go, go, go mentality that we've gotta be on 24 seven. And now that you know we're able to communicate with people at the drop of the hat, we're expected to reply to emails at random hours of the night. We're on our phones and devices all day. The blue light keeps our brain wired. So we're not getting restorative sleep, we have more sleep problems, it feeds into our mood, we get run down, more likely to get sick, lose more days of work, that stresses us out. Some people try and work regardless of being sick or not, makes you even more stressed out, run down, and your skin can give you some serious clues that you need to chill out. Take good care of yourselves, you guys. Adults need seven to eight hours of sleep. Feed yourself well, don't just rely on convenience foods. Your immune system can't operate on just that. Make sure that you are carving out time where you're not doing anything work-related, where you're just enjoying yourself. It's very important because what are you gonna do at the end of your life? Be like, oh, I wish I had taken on that other task at work and stayed up until 2 a.m. completing it. No. All right, y'all, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments how your winter is going. Have you managed to stay healthy or have you been coping with getting run down, stressed out? Let me know, I wanna hear from you all. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.